All right, everyone, we're back staring at my engine bay. And in this video, we're going to talk about what it takes to run E85 on the B58. This is a common question because a lot of people know that our engines are high compression. So that means that it relies a lot on timing to make good power and not just a lot of boost from the turbo. So the question is usually what upgrades do we need to make and how well does it handle it? And usually I answer it just trying to be smart and I just say all you need is a custom tune. But really, that is the right answer. The hardware on our engine and our fuel system can handle E85 just fine. So you can run full E85 with any setup that you have in a custom tune, but your fuel system will limit how much boost you can run. Now, I know that's probably not answering the question that most people truly are wondering. You'll probably be wondering one of two things. The first one is how to run high boost and full E85 because you want to completely max out the turbo. And in that case, you can run that with a stage two high pressure fuel pump or port injection. And that'll allow you to run a safe 21 to 22 PSI on the turbo and get the absolute most timing possible without having to worry about blending your E85. Now the other question people might be wondering or the way that we can redirect you to help you save a little time and money is what the best blend is to get the most power out of your stock turbo. And for that, you'll want to run an E30 to E50 mix. I've done a lot of testing going from E30 to full E85, and I can say the most that I've seen going to full E85 is maybe an extra half degree to one degree of timing, and it didn't really net a significant performance increase. So if you really just want the best blend of boost and timing without having to run a huge fuel pump, or a big upgraded port injection system, you'll definitely get really good power and timing just running an E30 to E50 mix. Now, if you absolutely want to squeeze out every inch of power from the stock turbo, you can go fully 85, but I think an E30 to E50 blend is the best combination of fuel efficiency, boost, and good timing. Now, also keep in mind that more timing doesn't always mean more power. There's going to be a point of negligible returns, and usually that's what happens when you get up to fully 85. You might be able to add more timing going to fully 85, but it won't necessarily give you more power or more acceleration. So that'll be up to you to test if you're working with a tuner to determine how much E85 you want to run. You can, of course, test it at the drag strip or run draggy times as you're updating your tune and adding more timing to see if it's actually making the car faster. Now, outside of that, nothing actually physically needs to be upgraded on the car. So the high pressure fuel pumps, the fuel system, the low pressure pump in the tank, our injectors, all of it are E85 safe. I have a video last year where I dynoed my car showing the results of running fully 85 on the car. I did have a TU pump, but it's an upgraded OEM pump just to kind of demonstrate that the OEM parts handle fully 85 just fine. Another thing that I recommend is to switch to a catalyst downpipe. It's not 100% required, but some studies have shown that the chemical reaction that happens when you burn E85 results in some deposits that can potentially clog your cat or make it fail. So you won't have to worry about that if you switch to a catalyst downpipe. And also the smell of E85 isn't nearly as bad as pump gas. It actually smells pretty sweet. So that's something that you won't have to worry about or some people actually even enjoy. Another thing I recommend when going to a full E85 tune is to reduce your oil change intervals. The high ethanol content will contaminate your oil and reduce its lifespan. So I typically recommend dropping it down. If you're already doing it every 3,000 to 5,000 miles, then it's probably not a big deal. But if you're following the manufacturer's maintenance plan and just bringing your car in for service once a year, you'll probably want to do an extra oil change in between those intervals. The best way to make sure you're doing your oil changes on time is to send out your oil for oil analysis. Companies like Blackstone Labs can take a look at your oil and tell you if your oil change interval is on time or if you can wait longer or if you should do it at shorter intervals. And that'll be the best bet for you to know exactly what you should do for your car. Another thing I recommend is to flush out your car every couple months. When I ran fully 85, I ran a tank of E30 or 93 every two to three months when I was daily driving it. And then I diluted the mix and went to 93 when I parked the car in the winter. So anytime that you're going to have your car sitting, you definitely don't want it just to have fully 85 in the tank. And if you're daily driving it, you'll still always have a little bit of E85 at the bottom of the tank when you fill up. So diluting it to E30 or running a tank of 93 will help make sure that you're completely flushing all the E85 out so that you can get some fresh E85 in the tank and you won't have to worry about old E85. 
Old E85 can cause a lot of problems, and so you definitely don't want to take a risk with that. So hopefully this video helps, and if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.